Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IPython Project Jupiter Developers Call for Tuesday, October 3rd. We are following an agenda which is linked in the chat box, which is on Dropbox paper. Um, if you would like to follow along um, and don't have access, you can request that within within Dropbox. Um, the top of the agenda is uh, a place to look at the weekly news uh, for each of our organizations or groups um, or sub projects. Feel free to click through and take a look at that. Um, we will kick off with up updates on documentation from Jessica. Go ahead, Jessica. Okay, so um, Jason and I uh, presented last week at Strata uh, mm -hmm. and that went well. Uh, and um, We've been encouraged to uh, make a user-facing documentation for JupyterLab. Um, so now there's an issue about that. That's something that's currently in process. Uh, also, um, I've been working on the website with Anna um, and Brian. Um, that's also going to be coming along. Um, thank you, Carol, for all your feedback. Um, it's been really great. Um, I'm hoping to uh, be taking Carol's advice on um, making nice GIFs um, to uh, under show what's, what um, the sort of features are in JupyterLab um, for the user-facing documentation. And also, um, we've been also thinking about how to present our uh, community page, um, and Carol had some great feedback on that. Um, so those things are coming along, uh, and um, just as a reminder to everyone, Hacktoberfest is now on. Um, I've been working on um, bugging people around um, their repos to mark things as being sprint friendly. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been uh, keeping their issues um, audited for sprint friendliness, um, and I'm, I've just kind of added an additional tag uh, for Hacktoberfest, um, asking people where appropriate. Um, but I strongly encourage um, everyone to see what they can add um, for Hacktoberfest. It's a great opportunity for us to get uh, additional help from the broader open source community. And uh, yeah, so so that, that's those are the things that are working on from my end. Um, and I, I hope to be following up on on things with the rest of the team with regards to uh, the website, um, and we'll, we'll be having those meetings later on. Got it. Thanks, Jessica. And Grant, you ready to give updates on Notebook? Sure. Okay, so <clears throat> we just merged uh, two PRs the past couple of days that are um, that are bug, bug fixes, um, bugs that were introduced in, uh, with 5.1 that we should, should probably re release a patch version. So do a 5.1.1 in the next couple of days. Um, and included in that will probably be um, the addition of art, um, right to left support and uh, Chinese translations, which um, should probably go in a, in a minor version release, but, um, but, you know, I guess I'd like to get feedback from people whether we can just, you know, ship them with 5.1.1. Um, additionally, we have this uh, VDOM um, MIME type support that um, is waiting, waiting on some changes to our testing environment. Um, I'll be working with Kyle on that. Um, and... Yeah, and, and regarding that, I guess there's just one question is whether we try to just, you know, patch our phantom JS environment um, or whether we switch completely over to uh, headless Chrome, uh, which is going to be a lot more work, but probably be a lot more maintainable in the future. Um, so if anyone has any feedback regarding that, I would appreciate that. And um, okay, it looks like Looks like Brian and Kyle also have some updates here, so uh, feel free to chime in, guys, if, you, if you'd like. Uh, yeah, oh, I can turn video on, too. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so the testing harness, I'm actually willing to go ahead and make the switch. I know I've dealt with the pain from the testing harness like years ago, too, 
and thought, man, can we switch this to Karma? And then it was a no. Um, and at least for my preliminary work, like I have a local branch, uh, I think I can do our current tests, but basically adapting all our Casper stuff to um, Puppeteer, at least for the moment. So it's still the same test and everything else. Uh, and then kind of go from go from there. Um, but I also want to pick up a different project, which is to capture the output messages. Um, Min said he'd help with it. Uh, I'm totally volunteering to continue down the JavaScript ramp if Min goes after the output capturing. <laughs> yeah, Wait. I'm actually looking at that right now. Tweet. I have so it, a, I have a, that, that would be a server a, side change yeah it would be uh as what as soon as the websocket connections go to zero uh messages get buffered on iopub got it okay okay so so if, and then replayed when there's a connection yep yeah. okay so this yeah it doesn't handle our full case of like uh like the real-time collaboration where the kernel is affecting the document but at least solves like a, a good portion of the case where it's just someone having intermittent connectivity to like a jupyter hub yeah, that that would make a huge difference. Thank, thanks so much. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I think Quick I've got that working. About... Short of, um, sorry, I, I think I've got that working. Short of um, being able to trigger lost connections on purpose. Um, that's the only thing I'm missing right now. <laughs> because yeah. it specifically doesn't cover the case of reloading the page where you get a new session. Yeah. Um, so I. I guess I can run a remote instance and disconnect with a laptop and just shutting a laptop will work. But right now I was testing locally and I can't make my desktop not be able to talk to itself. This sounds like a perfect opportunity for me to just write the puppeteer way of connecting and then disconnecting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you write the test, I can, I'll do the other side. <laughs> Yeah. I have a quick question for Grant. Uh, you mentioned Chrome headless. Uh, it looks like Firefox headless is coming out in uh, 55, 56, 57 as well. So that's nice. uh, another option, just flagging that for a, a possible option for testing as well. Mm -hmm. Presumably some testing framework will let you run either Chrome headless or Firefox headless, so we don't actually have to deal with that. I would assume somebody's going to write that software at some point. Well, I think I think the future, like most people use Karma, but we can't do because of how our current tests are situated. We can't just like switch it to Karma. Um, so in order for it with like because they're effectively regression tests, um, we we need something where we actually like control the the browser itself. Um, but Jupiter <laughs> Jupiter Lab, Interact, any of the others that are using a common JS environment have a nice easy path for testing. Um, um, but the the classic stuff has to somehow get adapted for what was what was run in Phantom before. So, yeah. Cool. And then uh, I, I actually am writing a few Joss papers right now, and wondering if it would be a good time for us with a recent notebook release for us to do a Joss paper for notebook. Um, I don't know, what, what do people think? I'd be and happy to have, help with that. Yeah, and you have the draft that Thomas has been leading on that's, I think, been, uh, we've been neglecting for a while. Yeah, and, and this is, I'm, I'm thinking of a, you know, honestly, the, the text for the Joss article probably won't take more than an hour to write. Most of it's just going to be managing the process of getting uh, all the contributors who want to be listed as authors, um, and maybe a few references, but I, I, I don't, I don't think a JOS paper is a substitute for a longer paper. Um, we have a, a we have a, a, a JAWS Journal of Open Research Software paper, more or less written in a, a GitHub repository. It's um, the the point where it got stuck is that it wants the the software that you're describing to be submitted into a repository as part of the submission process and we're describing software that's now split over sort of 20 repositories and we have to put one url in so we need to sort of decide 
which versions we're talking about and then collect all of the pieces together and upload it into to some other place as one big collection so that we can have one URL to talk about. I, I guess I was thinking about submitting separate JOS. I mean, it, it's a sort of a strength of their model that a JOS paper is a repo. And so my thought was to su initially submit one just on the notebook front end rather than the whole architecture, which is a whole nother ball of wax. And, and it has that complexity that you're talking about for sure. Um, yeah, it, it's sort of a constraint of JOS itself, not, yeah. But we can, yeah, we, we, we can follow up uh, offline about this to see what the, what the best way of proceeding with it is. Can you put a link to that uh, draft? Uh, the the no. draft doesn't exist yet. I, I've just been doing some other JOS papers. No, I mean, Th Thomas has the, I don't know where it is. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the draft that we've already put together. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else on notebook before we move on to Jupiter Lab? I just want to clarify. So is JOS, is that the journal of open source software? Yes. Okay. All right. That, that, I think that's it. Okay, great. So moving on to Jupiter Lab now. Okay, um, mostly uh, ongoing work toward the beta, the notebook model refactor, the getting the settings files handling um, situated and any bug fixes that come up along the way. Um, in light of the uh, React change license, we're, we're moving our VDOM implementation to use React and Jupyter Core. And that also means that we can pull in the external uh, renders that are in Jupyter Renders repo right now, uh, specifically the JSON tree viewer and the VDOM uh, output. So that's a, that's a great win for us, um, and also means we can um, start offering a library of components in Jupyter Lab uh, that are based on React. Um, and then uh, Brian, did you want to talk about the Altair release? Uh, just, yeah, just a quick mention. Um... So I've been working on a new Altair release that will work with JupyterLab and Interact, uh, the, the MIME-based rendering. And uh, it, it's still based on Vega Lite uh, 1.2, so that's not a change, um, but that should be coming up. I know Kyle is, is interested in that release, so I at least wanted to mention it. And it should be out, I don't know, in a week or so, roughly. So Brian, um, are we going to need to create a new renderer for Vega 3 and for Vega Lite 2? Yes. Yeah, we will. And that, my initial thought is for us to have an actual separate NPM package for that. Yeah. So that in principle, a user could uh, dual install those or or. Yeah, but, but yes, we, we would need a separate renderer. But this, this release of Altair More. does not target those, so we're fine for now. Well, it doesn't. Okay. Cool. Right, yeah, the, the, one, have the, a, um... the package in JupyterLab is called Vega 2 extension right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have a PR in the Jupyter Renders repo for Vega 3, and I've been working on that, but um, I'm having some issues rendering stuff. So, um, yeah, so that should be, that should be available soon and then you know when when the time comes we should be able to start rendering vega 3 and vega light 2. yeah and we're actually having a altair vega light hackathon in seattle at the university of washington on the 16th and 17th of october uh, if anyone's interested in attending please uh touch base with me Okay, sounds like we are ready to move on to widgets. Jason, you ready to give an update on that? <clears throat> uh, sure. Uh, not Things have been fairly quiet. We just have a patch release that we released, and we're excited at looking at uh, using React to uh, simplify quite a bit of the code base. 
that's it. Okay. So M, uh, you're going to talk about MB convert. Your audio is really low. I could hear you, but it's just really low. No. All right. Um, uh, now you're muted. Someone else could go while I fix my audio. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so I don't think Pete's on the call. Last time I looked, he wasn't anyway. Let me just double check. <clears throat> yeah, I don't see Peter on the call. So let's move on to Jupiter Hub and then we can try and be convert um, maybe after that. Uh, Min, do you want to? It looks like both Min and Brian have notes in Jupiter Hub. So um, whoever wants to go first, go ahead. Yeah, so at Jupiter Hub, we've had betas and release candidates, and things seem pretty solid. So I think we can release Jupiter up uh, 0 0.8 uh, today after the meeting. Um, yeah, lots of people have helped out testing and moved off various various edges, so I think it's in pretty good shape. Uh, and we released uh, um, the OAuth package that provides um, uh, OAuth support for GitHub and all those things um, with support for some new features in Jupyter Hub. Um, we released that uh, yesterday or today. Sometime recently. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Okay. And then looks like Brian has a question. Um, Min, do, you, do you think we should men start to mention ongoing binder work in this context, or that probably makes sense? Um, okay. Yeah, um, so various things happening on the um, binder front. Um, there have been a lot of uh, improvements and, and bug fixes and stability things uh, on binder. Um, we've got some more monitoring things on the service um, and deployed a few fixes. Um, and it's uh, starting to look uh, a bit nicer. And you can get a, a little badge that you can copy like you used to. Um, yeah, so I think uh, binders coming coming together. Nice. And the deployment's gotten significantly more automated as of a couple days ago. Um, or uh, so now it's just merging a pull request on the binder deployment repo is um, does uh, a bunch of stuff on Travis and then it ends up in the cloud. <laughs> All right, anything else on Jupyter Hub? No, okay. So uh, as a heads up, I will, um, before we close out the meeting, we are following the agenda, but before I close out the meeting, I, I will give everyone the opportunity or anyone who's on the call, um, I'll give you the opportunity to share or with the community or to talk. So if there's something that you wanna share out that's not on the agenda, um, you will get the chance to do that before the end of the meeting. But I think now we will go ahead and try M again, see if your audio is any is better. Good? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Fantastic. Wonderful. Yay. So um, uh, I was on vacation last week, so not too much. But uh, there is an old PR uh, that uh, Thomas has uh, commented on pretty extensively, but it could use some more review because it's not merged yet. Uh, that allows you to manually specify uh, templates for nbconvert uh, just by passing in a string as an attribute uh, in a sort of declarative way. Um, and uh, it has a lot of nice features that I'm excited for, and I'd like to get it in nbconvert. So if someone could review that, that'd be great. Um, Thomas may have comments, and I will shut up to allow him to say them if he wanted. No, otherwise I'm going to keep going. All right, charging on ahead. So I uh, also have uh, two new PRs that uh, could use looking at and that other people might like. Uh, one is to um, one is to start using uh, in and output. If you have a 
MIME type that is going to be exported separately as a resource that will be dumped into the file system. It say if you had a markdown document um, and you wanted an image, the it needs to be referenced by link uh, or by uh, base64. But uh, currently we do it by link. Um, and right now they get these random file names. What this does is it allows you to like programmatically name the file name by adding metadata to your output um, the, at the top level the file name uh, inside your output metadata. The easiest way to do that is with the display function. Uh, I wasn't sure if there are other easy ways to add metadata to output uh, objects, uh, like programmatically. So uh, I'm intrigued. Anyone who has thoughts about that, please uh, weigh in on the PR, because I'd like to also have docs uh, for explaining how to use this, um, because I think that'll make it much more useful of a feature, because uh, otherwise people won't know how. Uh, then uh, the last bit is uh, a new uh, feature that just respects the cell tag raises exception, just like in the notebook now that that's released, um, that allows you to continue execution uh, on a notebook using and convert execute. Um, if it has the cell raises uh, raises exception uh, cell tag, uh, except uh, it also now has a new command line flag, uh, force uh, force raise errors or something like that. I forget which one. I forget exactly what it was in order to be able to override that default behavior. Because what I'm planning on doing is incorporating that by default, because people shouldn't have to enable it in order to get access to that feature, because we don't enable it in the notebook. That pretty much covers it for now in terms of any convert. OK, sounds good. Um, Kyle, are you ready to talk about Interact? I am now. There we go. Okay. Let me scroll down. Uh, yeah, so uh, we upgraded all our packages to React 16, and then relatably uh, Jest and Flow uh, and all the other ones that got relicensed as MIT. Those all got upgraded, so all of our packages um, uh, fit within that <laughs> fit the fit the new license, which means I also pulled the like, React license uh, out of our top level repo uh, and then shipped the packages. And I guess I should have put this. Yeah, so. Uh, that includes transform VDOM. Uh, and because of the, the JupyterLab uh, MIME PR, I also exported object to React, um, which just takes that exact VDOM spec um, and turns it into a React element. So that's available off of the transform VDOM module. Um, I'm guessing I didn't put it in the readme though, but it's there. Um, and then the VDOM Python library, uh, we'll make another release. Uh, we have a lot more helper functions, thanks to Brian. Um, and then we also handle a bunch of null and none children elements. Uh, and then we have some evolving documentation and, and practices, um, thanks to, to Carol and I. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll see how things go from there. Uh, Kyle, are you, guys, yeah. um, are you guys shipping like a bundled React or how are you how are you assuming that the client is going to load React on the page? Um, uh, we assume that they're going to adhere to that VDOM spec, which means that also the the way that we made it too, we wrote it so that you didn't even have to use React. It's it's literally just JSON HTML. Um, what are you doing in Interact though? We when when we get the I mean it, it works the same as the the VDOM renderer for Jupyter Lab, uh, in that if we get the VDOM spec. Um, we like hydrate a uh, React layout and put it on the page. So okay. I mean, React so, is already available in that case. Okay, so so the crux of my question is that um, since there can only be one React loaded on the page at any given time, I was just curious if we needed to think about a standard way of what we all decide is the React versions we're going to support and how to get them on the page so that multiple plugins aren't trying to conflict with different React versions. Is that still true even with React 15? Because uh, we use multiple versions of React to, across Atom plugins, and it's no longer a problem. They yeah. fixed it because of how they're doing React IDs. It's that's like that is that is okay. an old problem. That, um, well, that's, that's news to me. I was I was I thought it was okay. still an issue. 
at least in Interact, we only have one version of React because the entire app is React. Um, so, so Kyle, yeah. you, you think like in Jupyter Lab, we won't have a problem if different extensions use React 15 or React 16? You could try and see what happens. Um, <laughs> okay. I know that there was no problem with React 15, so you can't hold me to it for React 16. Uh, okay. okay, got it. But, but it be, yeah, because we uh, Voyager right now is still based on an older version of 15, and we're oh, okay. starting to do active work on that extension, and so it it may hold up us transitioning to 16. Oh, um, okay. So. But but yeah, we can. I mean, if, if if we think it may be okay, we can surely try it and see see what. Yeah. Okay, it's something We're, to follow. Up. Yeah, I, I'm I'm okay if we uh, synchronize on the React version. Um, I hurried to get the React 16 uh, version out so that you can use our packages. Um, <clears throat> just just like the object to React thing. because um, we try to stay in sync for hydrogen too. Lucas is on the on the call too. And um, as much as possible, we we like we just kind of move everything forward together, um, and so that usually tends to be whatever the recent React release is. Okay, yeah, let, let's. Uh, I will. So so is is the plan grant for us to npm depend on that VDOM package? Yeah, so the extension, yeah, um, do you mean that is the extension going to depend on some version of React? Well, yeah, I mean, if the if if the VDOM NPM package is based on React 16, then, yeah. okay, but maybe that gives us the opportunity to test, to test this out and see if it's an issue or if, if we need to. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, yeah. yeah, so we... We discussed this on Friday in the uh, Jupyter Lab notebook meeting, and I, I think one thing that we can do if, if we run into issues with there being React 16 or React 15 on the same page, um, I think we should be able to resolve that in the Webpack build, in the Webpack config, and basically, um, you know, if an extension... Yeah, we should be able to force there to be one version of React on the yeah. page using Webpack config. Got it. Yeah, because exactly. Because they're API compatible, from yeah, in th in theory. Well, yeah. so uh, you'll probably with the caveat that React 16 would probably have to be your latest. Yeah, I, I, it would have to be because uh, it's backwards compatible with React 15, but React 15 is not like forwards compatible. Forwards compatible. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So if we so if we force React 16 in Jupyter Lab, it should work fine with 15 based code. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> as long as no one's using React components that use some hidden API. <laughs> okay, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so I did in run into that last week. In terms of compatibility, um, what might a React component that's written for 16 um, have that's not compatible with 15? Is there, is there um, anything? Uh, we're we're probably going to start using component did catch, but it probably won't be at the yeah. the level of the uh, outputs. Um, and, and then also, couldn't couldn't the uh, the new attribute naming stuff show up? That's true. Okay, so there's a couple things that are. Different. Oh, and the attribute naming. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bunch of new things you could do in React 16 that that will basically. I, I think in most cases there'll actually be a no op. Uh, they just won't behave like you think, because if if component did catch is defined for React 15, it'll just do nothing. I mean, it'll just <laughs> it'll never bomb out for you. <laughs> and yeah. then for the attributes, they'll probably get filtered. Um, yeah. But I I have no use of weird attributes because I would use data dash for special attributes. Yeah. Yeah. And then for Voyager, we could I mean. We could potentially just upgrade Voyager. We could just submit a PR to Voyager and just upgrade it to 16, uh, assuming that there's no issue with that. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be. Uh, so the the developers of Voyager uh, will be at this uh, hackathon later in October, and so I, I can meet with them and talk and make sure there's no problems there. It just it's going to be two two weeks from now before that happens. So I want to make sure yeah. we're okay in the meantime. 
Cool. So one one thing that I I've been thinking about with respect to this uh, VDOM uh, mime type is it, it starts to fill a gap we've had for Python that sort of has been filled traditionally by uh, processing the language and uh, logo turtle type things in that it will be very easy for us to create Python programs that have very sort of transparent, easy to use visual representations of things. So you could imagine, you know, teaching kids to program with emojis moving all over the screen, things like that. And so it's so crazy good how this is. <laughs> no, it, it is. It's, it's, it's super simple. Even for things like, uh, like in physics labs, uh, you often want to animate a plot or show like a trajectory, an X, Y trajectory of, of something. And, all of a sudden, that stuff becomes really, really easy, and so I, I don't know. I, I think it's it, that there's a, a new a new audience that we want to serve that I think will be helped greatly by this. Um, On a way more boring enterprise note, um, we're going to use it for reporting because it's like really easy to like generate output that actually looks good. <laughs> Um, and you can actually imagine that using that more generally as templating, I've been like playing around with some ideas about how we might try to use something like this, uh, in an NB convert style thing, um, just like the reporting. Yeah. Um, and one, so yeah, I, I don't know, we, we can continue these discussions offline, but I, I'm, I'm excited about the of what opens up uh, for us with that. Um, mm -hmm. All right, anything else on Interact before we move on? <clears throat> Want to say hi, Lucas? Yeah, hi, I'm Lucas. Um, just two quick notes for me. Um, the Electron app um, with the next version will support auto updates on Windows and Mac. So um, we can ship a lot more um, like frequently without people having to download constantly new binaries. And Hydrogen will uh, support multiple independent kernels, uh, which was a very big re uh, request we had for uh, I think years almost, um, so it's now in line with like the behavior of Jupyter um, Notebook and stuff. Yeah, that's that's everything I have. Maybe one note um, about React 16. Um, I think you can return multiple elements from the renderer. So um, if uh, people write um, React 16 components, they uh, uh, with uh, some new features, they probably will break um, when used with the lower version. Yeah. Uh, great work on hydrogen, Lucas. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. We love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lucas, for sharing and, and welcome. Um, so let's move on now to actually, before we move on, is there anything that's not on the agenda that anyone would like to share with the um, other people on the call or with the community? Now would be the chance for you to do that. Otherwise, I will move on to conferences and workshops. Okay, so we'll move on. Um, looks like um, Grace Hopper is happening right now in sunny Orlando. Do you want to talk about it, Carol? Do you want to tell us how Jupiter is involved? Uh, sure. Um, actually, it officially, I guess, starts tonight, tomorrow. But on Thursday, um, each year at Grace Hopper, they do an open source day where they um, have probably eight to ten projects, um, usually Microsoft and Google and some of the other uh, big names in open source. And um, 
students learn how to contribute to open source. And this year's theme is humanitarian um, open source. And so we've got um, Sphinx docs going and um, folks are going to be able to make some notebooks and look at some data sets and um, explore how those can be used for humanitarian. And, um, and we're using Jupyter and Binder and Interact and also the Microsoft Azure notebooks. So um, depending on how Wi-Fi holds up, um, we'll decide. Last year, everything went down, including GitHub itself. So um, we'll see how it goes this year. But well, it should be fun. Great. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Thanks for sharing. Is there anything else on the events list that anyone wants to highlight or talk about? Um, any presentations they're giving or anything that they want to call out? Uh, next week is Maintainerati, mm -hmm. um, which is a open source unconference um, in conjunction with GitHub Universe in San Francisco. Um, it's next Tuesday. Uh, a week from today. So um, anyone who uh, is uh, interested in going, tickets are only $5. So I strongly encourage um, people go. I know Carol went one year and loved it. So. Right. Sounds good. Um, there is also, we've started um, a section of the conferences and workshops section of the agenda for open um, CFPs. So if you hear of any, um, please share with everyone and include in this document. Um, currently, there's one there for PyCon uh, 2018, which will be in Cleveland in May. Um, anything else from the events list that anyone wants to talk about or highlight before we move on? I don't know if it is sort of unrelated if people saw, but uh, LIGO uh, basically won the Physics Nobel Prize this morning. So that's very exciting, wow. obviously, for, for that collaboration, but also that uh, Jupyter Notebooks have been used uh, extensively uh, in that work. So it's, uh, I don't know, something the Jupyter communi community can be very proud of to enable things like that. Yeah, definitely. That's exciting. I hadn't heard that. So yeah, thanks for sharing. So now um, moving on to pretty much closing out the meeting. Um, if you have any releases planned um, for this week or um, you had any last week or you have any coming up soon in the next week or two, please um, repeat those into the uh, very last section in the agenda. We keep track of the releases. Um, <clears throat> in in this format and then also um, there is a section for any action items um, from last week or th that you would like either for this group that you would like either um, attention from this group or from the community so feel free to add things there it looks like jessica added one for um, starting new blog posts um, and getting those drafts um, going so I think that's pretty much it. We've reached the end of the agenda. So if there's anything else uh, before we close out, feel free to unmute your microphone, get ready. We'll give you one more second and then uh, we will go ahead and close out. So um, anything else before we go? Doesn't look like it. Your one second is up. Okay, so um, have a great week, everyone. It was good to see you and I'll see you next week.